Hi ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this webinar from the Philips Lighting University. Today's webinar is titled Integrated Indoor Positioning in Retail Lighting Solutions, and it is presented to you by Nathan Pettijohn, CEO of ASEL411 and Gerben van der Lucht, Business Leader for Indoor Positioning at Philips Lighting. I am the CEO of ISL411. Um, our company was founded uh, in 2008, and we specialize in indoor mapping, merchandising, uh, and analytics for retailers. So we have an exciting event today, and uh, we, we're going to walk through uh, several interesting topics. First of all, I wanted to present a quick snapshot of IL411 so that you understand the context of where I am coming from in the discussion today. So, um, essentially, IL411 has been building what we like to call the Internet of Stores. And the Internet of Stores is a concept that really brings the same level of sophistication that we've come to expect from e-commerce websites to a physical re retail store. Um, that involves understanding where a shopper comes from, what they do in the store, where do they go, what do they put in their basket, and ultimately, what do they buy. And this is really the how of, of how shopping takes place. Uh, we've deployed our solutions in over 13,000 retail stores, primarily in North America, uh, covering product search, indoor mapping, indoor positioning, shopper analytics, uh, shopper apps, and associate apps. Uh, typically, the technology is deployed within the retailer's uh, branded application and back-end system. So the topics that we'll cover today uh, include uh, why product and shopper location matters, uh, the big lost sales opportunity that's taking place and how we can solve it, how mobile phones have become the shopping companion, how to build a meaningful solution that's very comprehensive, so we'll just touch on the highlights, uh, why LED-based indoor location is a game changer, and we're also going to discuss some real and significant benefits uh, in a couple of uh, short case studies as well. So as we look at uh, shoppers using mobile in-store, uh, this chart right here showcases that across virtually every vertical of, of product category, shoppers are using their smartphones in-store for various research, um, accessing information, and helping them make a buying decision. When we look at the big lost sales opportunity, um, we did a a survey where we went out and asked uh, over a thousand customers what do they typically do when they can't find a particular item and we see here in this graphic that over half of them will ask an associate for help which is primarily because it's been the only solution available uh, close to 29 percent keep looking for it but what's interesting here is the roughly 16 percent that will either go to another store to look for it choose to not buy the item at all or purchase another product instead and when you look at that um, across the globe it's a massive sales loss oppor opportunity to capture so ultimately what that means is um, why is an in-store mobile strategy important um, we found and we're going to show you more today about how mobile engaged shoppers in store drives more visits and drives bigger basket size. First let's touch in on a couple of the key market drivers for indoor location. Now this graphic uh, actually comes from uh, Comscore and I thought it was interesting because it shows in, in 2014 we actually saw when mobile uh, usurped desktop in terms of the digital media time spent by platform and that has only continued to grow since then um, but we've seen that where shoppers are completely engaged there's a tidal wave of mobile engagement and shopping is is one of those If we look a little deeper uh, into the retail category uh, and specifically into grocery shopping uh, we find that 59 percent of shoppers are using their mobile devices for grocery shopping uh, 42% are reviewing shopping lists, 
37% are searching for discounts and promos, and 27% get competitor pricing. So this offers a great opportunity uh, to leverage that mobile engagement um, and offer more. So what I'd like to ask here, here is an audience poll. So everyone, um, we're asking the question, I prefer to use my mobile phone for assistance while shopping than to ask a store associate for help. So you should see over uh, to the right uh, a polling question where you can simply uh, answer yes or no. And we're going to offer 30 seconds for everyone to please uh, chime in and, and let us know what your opinion is. All right, so I think we'll, uh, we'll move on. We have uh, a polling here that is uh, skewed very differently than what uh, a national or an international analyst has, uh, has found. So um, as I look here at the, uh, the poll um, from the audience that's on the call today, we had 28% uh, that said yes, 32% uh, that said no, and 40% did not answer. Uh, so if we take a look at uh, what Deloitte Digital found, um, they actually asked this question and found that 73% of smartphone shoppers prefer to use their mobile phone for assistance in-store versus an associate. Um, and uh, that's consistent with what we see across uh, shop people using mobile devices for virtually everything um, in their life today. But this is a huge opportunity, uh, again, to connect with uh, those shoppers if we give them the right tools. And then if you look at uh, in-store buying, it is here to stay. There is still 90% uh, of purchases that take place inside of the store. Uh, and this, um, this stat came from Google, but it's consistent across uh, what, we, what we find regularly. Now as we move into a little bit more uh, depth into the indoor location technology, um, one of the, the myths that uh, typically uh, people assume is that indoor location is simply a point solution that uh, tracks the positioning of a user inside a location. But uh, actually for value to be created, it is really an ecosystem of both product location, uh, data optimization, positioning technology, and contextual content management. And it's when all these things come together that there's really value created. So as we look at uh, the details of that, uh, over to the left on this chart you'll see uh, data optimization. And when we look at the retail environment, that includes optimizing the store floor plan, uh, product location, typically with X, Y, and even Z coordinates, uh, that can be done through various softwares today. Um, store inventory data, what, what is uh, housed on the shelves in the store. Uh, then taking sales data and even marketing data, both uh, in-store and out-of-store, uh, combining all of that uh, together. Then bringing, bringing in both positioning technology and proximity technology to understand where shoppers are located in store related to all this other data. We then can derive actionable solutions. And this includes allowing shoppers to search and navigate to products inside of the store, uh, see interactive store mapping, content and notification management, but then also uh, passive analytics and insights whereby uh, we can understand uh, shopper intent and not necessarily have to message that shopper, but we can use that data for uh, remarketing purposes um, in other channels. And so this visual just gives a, a quick representation of once that data has been organized, it can be elegantly uh, presented to shoppers and help them as they go in store to have a unique experience to organize their shopping lists, actually showcase where they are on a, a store floor map, and we found that um, this does enhance loyalty and convenience, can drive store trips, etc. So if, as we look uh, even more in depth at indoor positioning technology, um, this is a very simple chart. It, it gets much more comprehensive than this. But if we look at uh, the various types of technology that we're seeing deployed, uh, computer vision is very interesting and is very accurate. It is at a very early stage today where you're using multiple cameras on a phone device. Uh, 
um, that is picking up uh, uh, information in, in terms of what it sees. It's very accurate, but is not deployed uh, on a large scale today. Uh, there's magnetic technology that leverages uh, the magnetic fields in any uh, environment, and the magnetometer on mobile devices can help to understand where that device is. But you're still getting about two meter accuracy. Um, when you start combining some of the other inertial sensors on a mobile device, um, you can get down to one meter accuracy. Uh, there's also Wi-Fi, um, and, and being done with uh, triangulating the Wi-Fi radio frequency signals, uh, you can still get um, anywhere from two to five meters of accuracy. The uh, the two that um, are showing a lot of promise today are um, beacon technology, which can detect within about two meters of accuracy uh, where a, a mobile device is located in store and allows uh, engagement to happen when the device is in the shopper's pocket and an application is running in the background. And then uh, LED, uh, which we're, we're going to hear more from Herman uh, here in a few moments, uh, is very promising technology and leverages existing lighting infrastructure and gets very precise uh, positioning and uh, orientation. And, and um, by leveraging that technology, it opens up a whole new world of analytics capabilities, not only for brands, but also for retailers. So this is just a, uh, a quick visual of, of saying if we, if we combine LED lights and we add uh, beacon technology to that, and, and then we layer in digital store mapping and product data, there's a very compelling opportunity to drive impulse center store visits. And, and by assisting shoppers um, with a combination of this data and technology, um, it is shown that we can influence the, uh, the shopper behavior in store. So with that, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of different um, uh, case studies. Uh, one of those is uh, Walgreens. So if you look at this slide, uh, Walgreens um, sees that a shopper is four to six times as valuable to them if they shop in these three channels, which are stores, online, and mobile. And so getting them to use mobile in store is particularly uh, valuable. As you see on the right hand of the screen, this is a a, a screen of what you'll see when you walk into a Walgreens store, which is different than when you're outside of it. And you'll notice that the floor mapping, product location, and scanner is actually front and center. And this is very scientific by design. So at the top of the screen you have a your loyalty program, which uh, helps to understand your uh, previous purchase history and intent. The floor map, product locator, and scanner helps uh, to understand your immediate purchase intent and thereby the coupons that are being displayed below become much more accurate and relevant based upon previous purchase history and immediate intent. Um, so if we look at this um, across Walgreens stores one of the ways that they're doing this is, is also allowing uh, shoppers to build a shopping list in the Walgreens app and then map that list uh, throughout the store. And this is deployed in over 8,000 stores uh, in the U.S. and Puerto Rico. And um, we estimate, on average, a 5 to 10% increase in profit from an aisle 411 user. And the way that that's looked at is that we are saving efficiencies with associates by allowing the shopper to do their own uh, navigation to products. Uh, and we're also helping to remove that lost sale that may have happened. Uh, if you recall, in the beginning of the presentation, we talked about shoppers that are leaving the store without buying because they don't have time and they're frustrated and they can't find a product. This, this helps increase that conversion rate. Then we'll look at one more um, case study, which is Toys R Us. And um, uh, this, there was a deployment that took place in over 590 stores in the US and what happened is shoppers were allowed to select uh, from a list of special offers and they could select one or many of these and then map those throughout the store and we did a B testing um, across uh, shoppers who were what we called deal mappers 
and those who are not. And we found uh, across uh, these stores well over 10% increase in basket size. Um, there were many things going here which um, when you take a digital savvy shopper, give them the tools, uh, make it convenient and less intimidating to shop the store and easy to find those offers. Uh, what we saw was uh, increased conversion. So that was uh, a great uh, experience and then that led to an expansion uh, to a another 200 stores to cover all of the Babies R Us stores um, in North America as well. And then finally, uh, a comprehensive look at, at the value here. Um, when we have uh, surveyed shoppers in-store uh, where the in-store mapping exists, we find that uh, shoppers are 28% more likely to make a trip to the store knowing that in-store mapping is available. And uh, the primary reason for this is the store becomes less intimidating and the convenience fac factor um, allows that shopper to know they can come in and have a pleasant experience and therefore more likely to visit. And then if we look at basket lift, um, we have done multiple A-B tests with uh, various uh, consumer product brands and shown that if we deliver a product recommendation in store based upon your product search and where that product's located, uh, we can increase the conversion by 2x of, of getting you to purchase that product versus sending you the same advertisement uh, when you are out of the store or in home. And then finally, uh, before I turn it over to Kerbin here, um, all of this results in some very interesting in-store analytics. And by combining store sales, uh, product location, and shopper location, uh, we start to get to a point where um, the internet of stores, as we talked about, uh, becomes real and allows retailers to make much more informed decisions about their physical stores just like uh, they do with their e-commerce sites. And um, so with that, um, that ends my uh, portion of the presentation and uh, I'm going to here, just a moment, turn it over to Herman. Thanks Nathan. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone on the phone. Uh, my name is Gerben van der Lucht. I work for uh, Philips Lighting and I'm leading the um, indoor positioning business for Philips Lighting. I'm really excited to, uh, to be here and have the opportunity to talk to you about how we at Philips are creating value for retailers that goes beyond illumination, like we do with our indoor positioning business. I'm equally excited to do that in co-creation with Nathan from Mile 411. Uh, Philips and iPhone 1 are working together on a few products now and I think it's always inspiring to hear Nathan talking about how mobile apps will enhance the physical stores. In the remainder of this webinar I will um, build on what Nathan was saying in his first part uh, and cover a few more topics. So I will start with um, basically explaining a little bit on the vision that we at Philips have on how retail lighting will evolve um, and how that drives our innovation. Uh, you have heard Nathan talking about indoor location and why that matters. I would uh, take a little bit more time and dive deep into the different use cases that we see for location aware mobile apps. And after that, I will share with you the results of a shopper survey that Philips conducted on this specific topic, which basically answers the question, uh, what use cases shoppers really appreciate most? And then I will explain why in the positioning or location in a retail store can best be done with the lighting. Uh, and to close off, I will highlight that uh, with an important proof point, which is the work we have done with Carrefour in France. So let's kick off with the, uh, how Philips sees the role of lighting in the retail space evolving. In the past 100 years, Philips has been helping retailers to save energy, uh, to create comfortable and attractive spaces. And still for us, the reduction of operational costs and energy costs, as well as enhancing spaces and ambiences, are important objectives uh, and it are drivers for our innovation. However, with Lighting becoming 
today an integral part of the Internet of Things, we believe that it can be used for much more than just illumination. Uh, just imagine what you could do if you turn the lighting infrastructure into a grid of smart connected fixtures that have several sensing and communication capabilities. Um, if you take it from that perspective, indoor positioning with light actually is only the first step. We believe it's a valuable and timely extension of what you can do with lighting today, uh, but much more is possible. And that's why next to indoor positioning, we're now also building an offer into location analytics, and we are developing a concept which is digital ceiling, which actually positions lighting as the core backbone for data um, collection and transmission in the retail store. Now let's move from the big vision um, to the reality and the opportunities we have today. Nathan already talked about the power of location in stores. What would be possible if retailers start deploying indoor positioning systems in their stores? What services would then uh, be possible? We believe there are basically five categories. The first category um, is the one where use cases are created that make the life of the shopper much more easy in the store. So really focused on shopper convenience. Think, for example, of the often used um, use case of wayfinding to products. So you have your shopping list in the store, you basically know where to go, but then on your shopping list there are a few topics, um, the so-called last items on your shopping list that you can't find. And now we know from what Nathan told us that there is a big lost sales opportunity that we can capture if we would implement a find the product service in the retail store. Another example in the same category uh, would be very different, is where, for example, you would ask a, a store associate for help and they would know where you are so they can just come over uh, and help you out without you uh, having the need to, to find them. The second category <coughs> of use cases is driving what we call time and location relevant interaction between the retailer and the shoppers. We call it customer or shopper engagement. Uh, things like receiving the wine promotion when you are in the wine department. Um, research has shown that indeed the conversion rates on promotions that are sent to people when they are in the, um, in the location where they can act on it, the right time and the right location, can be much, much higher than generic promotions. Also think of what would become possible if you can trigger, for example, location-relevant surveys or uh, shopper feedback. Even if you would um, uh, redo or revamp a part of your store and you would like to know what shoppers think about it, why would you not ask them if they enter that part of the store? The third category we call staff and store efficiency, which basically mirrors the first two categories, but then applies it to the associates and the staff. So you give all the tools that you give to your shoppers also in the hands of your staff to make them more productive uh, and more effective. Um, wayfinding or optimal routing of order pickers in store would be a good example. You could also provide your sales assistants with the knowledge of where your most valuable shoppers are in the store at a certain moment. And the location data that you generate with those use cases, you can then use to optimize marketing campaigns or store layout, for example. And as the last category, and that's the category that cuts across the other four, is what we call partnering with brands, because everything that we just discussed can be done for and with brands, which then actually opens up new revenue opportunities for retailers. So it's pretty clear that there are quite a few choices to be made by retailers when it comes to which use case, which location-based service should I offer to my shoppers. Um, and in order to support retailers in selecting the winning use cases, Philips commissioned research among 3,000 shoppers in grocery as well as in do-it-yourself segments, so two segments, three markets, the US, France and the Netherlands, to identify 
what indoor location services shoppers would like to see included in the retail apps. And for this, we used the listing of use cases that we just discussed in the overview earlier. And we complemented that research with shop alongs and interviews with shoppers that have experienced the Philips indoor positioning system uh, in Carrefour in France. And we were helped in this research by Kantar TNS. So let's have a look at what key insights we generated with this research. The graph you see here represents for each of the 26 research use cases the percentage of grocery shoppers that we surveyed and that indicated that they are interested in that specific use case. So the first thing that jumps out if you look at the results is that grocery shoppers do have a genuine interest in location-based services overall. Actually, in fact, 21 out of the 26 use cases scores higher than 50% in terms of people surveyed that said they had an interest. And for some use cases, it actually goes up to 70 to 80%. That's the case for grocery as well as for do-it-yourself shoppers. And in fact, as you can see, for do-it-yourself shoppers, the numbers are even more convincing than the ones from grocery shoppers. And what we take from this is that there is a major opportunity for retailers to increase shopper engagement by offering personalized location-based services that are truly relevant to the needs and the wishes of shoppers. If we dive a bit deeper into the results, um, because the graphs I just showed are difficult to grasp, I, I appreciate that, um, and we summarize the most popular use cases then we basically see five categories that stand out for both segments. The first is all about promotions. Um, using indoor positioning to receive and navigate to promotions and deals. In fact, receiving personalized promotions based on location is the highest scored use case for grocery shoppers. And we also found significant proof that shoppers are in for enhancing their shopping experience with some excitement and fun. So all the use cases that we researched with the shoppers that relate to deals and loyalty points and had a gamification element, such as a treasure hunt or a wheel of fortune, uh, they all scored above the, uh, the average. Obviously, and that's the third category, is product search. I think it's a, it's a well-known uh, example uh, well researched as well and it is indeed in high demand with shoppers um, but it's not the only one uh, indoor location use case that we should uh, should look at. Uh, next to product search location can also drive fast and easy access to product information or to pricing information and what we found is that it is highly appreciated by shoppers especially in a do-it-yourself segment. And last but not least typical convenience use cases like requesting a store associate to come over and help, also are um, scored very, very high, again, specifically in the do-it-yourself segment. So if we summarize that, and also look at the differences between grocery and do-it-yourself, you could say that in the grocery segment, those surveyed preferred location-based services that help them to save time and money, while in the do-it-yourself segment, shoppers preferred services that help them to get the right product and good assistance and advice. So let's do another poll again. I know it's a bit dangerous because the, the results of the first poll were quite different from what you found in the market. Let's do another test. Um, the question is, how likely is it that you will use a retailer app that features location-based services? And you can answer with likely or not likely. And the poll will be opened by the facilitator and you can again um, participate on the right side of the screen. So we give you again 30 seconds to, um, to vote. Okay, thank you for voting and for getting uh, the results in. Um, so what I learned from the results if I quickly, is basically 50, close to 50% of uh, this audience says, well, 
yes, likely to use an app that actually features these kinds of services. 11% um, or so 10% says, well, not likely, and the rest uh, is not providing an answer. So let's compare that with what we found in our shopper research uh, and see if this time we're a bit closer to, uh, to the results that you just uh, viewed in the, in the poll. Before we get to that actual number, what we did uh, in our research, we compared the actual use of retail apps, as indicated by the shoppers that were surveyed, with their intention to use apps if location-based services were featured. And let's first look at the scores of the current use, and it actually becomes clear that retailers have not yet fully exploited the opportunities that mobile apps do offer. So we see some strong usage in the US, and by the way, the top number in that circle is for grocery. The bottom number is for do-it-yourself. In the US, we see some strong usage, uh, around 50%, driven by high scores, for example, um, of apps from Safeway and Kroger. Uh, a bit less in Europe, 24% in the Netherlands, close to 30 in France. And for do-it-yourself, the use is consistently lower in all three markets. If we then move to the usage intention, um, what we basically see is that the average number of US and France, which is, let's say, 50 to 60 percent, is pretty close to what you answered in this, uh, in this poll as well. You were at around 50 percent. Um, in the Netherlands, however, it's uh, significantly lower. What we believe is that it's driven by the fact that in the Netherlands, the large format hypermarket is actually a non-existing format in, in retail. The most important insight, however, from this chart is that there is a significant potential for retailers to drive the usage of their mobile apps when adding, in a smart way, of course, location-based services. There is a big gap between current use and intention to use if you add location-based services. And therefore, we believe location-based services actually could drive the uses of mobile apps in retail stores. We should, however, um, appreciate that this opportunity also comes at a cost. So in order to make the mobile app location aware, retailers need to install indoor positioning systems in their stores. And current solutions on the market mainly rely on radio frequency or RF technologies, such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And the problem for many retailers is that this requires an additional install in their stores. It often comes with high initial investments, while the final performance is, well, wobbly at best, I would say, right? There's low accuracy, notable delay, and often that makes shoppers to try and reject, which is not what you want as a retailer. So using light-based into positioning can end this struggle. The light will leverage two technologies. First of all, it's the visible light communication or coded light, as we say in Philips, which provides a unique foot level, 30 centimeters. You, you probably have seen Nathan talking about five, which actually is technically correct. We can achieve that, but we, um, we are a bit more cautious on what we promise. So 30 centimeter accuracy uh, and a fully real time experience. The second is Bluetooth that then can be used to provide notifications when the phone is not actively used and can also do tracking of the full customer journey in the store. And those Bluetooth beacons will be integrated into the light fixture so that it does not require additional installation and also no battery replacement is needed. The Philips the solution next to hardware obviously also comes with software, because it's the software algorithm that does the actual positioning. Uh, our software works with iOS as well as Android. It has proven to be very easy to be integrated into retail apps. We have done it several times now, and we get very, very good feedback on that. <clears throat> it also comes with a what we call pay-as-you-go pricing model. So that means that the uplift for the lighting infrastructure is very limited to zero, and it only the retailer only pays if and when he decides to use the location service. And not to forget, all this is on top of the improved light quality 
the better ambience plus significant energy savings that the LED lighting will bring anyway. And that's why we like to refer to this as what we call perfect light and precise location. A good proof point in my view, and you might have heard about this, the first world's first installation of the Philips indoor positioning system with, what, with Carrefour in France, in Lille. Uh, last year we installed <clears throat> in that store two and a half kilometers or 800 fixtures of linear LED lighting. Uh, it's a large hypermarket, 8,000 square meter of floor space and every day around two to 300 products on promotion. So our lighting system um, also is, is equipped with dynamite based dimming. It provides 50% energy saving, but next to that, of course, it provides also the super accurate uh, indoor positioning performance. What Carrefour did was building on top of that a mobile app called Promo Seu, which means in English, promotion, where are you? that allows shoppers to locate themselves on the shop floor. And you actually see an example of that in the, uh, the screen uh, of the iPhone. It's the blue dot that is um, on the map of the floor. They can select and find promotions. They can see promotions around me, signal out of stock items and like promotions. <coughs> All this is with the objective to improve on the availability and also on the findability, if that is a word I don't know, of promotions and enhance the service of their shop to their shoppers. The results of this project look pretty promising. First of all, the app, which is an iOS only app, has been downloaded, downloaded over three and a half thousand times by now. The findability of promotions has improved during the uh, period of the pilot and shoppers do score the application as well as the Philips system as helpful and easy to use. And this week actually Carrefour was awarded the Retail Technology Award for Best Customer Experience by the German Retail Institute for exactly this initiative. So let me uh, try to recap what you have heard from, from Nathan and from uh, myself. Um, in a few key conclusions. First of all, I think it's important to notice that the stores are here to stay. So we talk a lot about mobile, digital, online, but physical stores are here to stay. The mobile phone, however, um, will become an increasingly important shopping companion. And in-store mobile shopper engagement will drive more visits and bigger baskets. And that's why it's important for retailers. The retail apps today have not yet unlocked that full opportunity and we believe that location-based services are wanted by shoppers and can drive the app usage and lighting in turn ends the indoor location struggle by offering everything that a, a retailer needs from perfect lights to precise location with that i would like to thank you for your attention i really hope you enjoyed this uh, this webinar if there's anything you want to know about IELTS 401 or their services, please reach out to Nathan over email. Or if you want to know more about the Philips Indoor Positioning System, you can drop me a message as well. 